In this video, I'm going to be going over with you guys a huge mistake skinny young men make when they're bulking and when they're trying to measure progression. And this is really, really important to talk about because if they solely focus and base their progression off this thing whilst they're bulking and making progress, then they're misleading themselves and their progress is going to be inaccurate in their heads to what their progress actually is because they're not considering the full picture. And I'll get onto that in a second and you'll understand what I mean. And before we just get into this video and I'll explain the big mistake that skinny young men make, I just want to briefly introduce myself to you guys. So if you don't know me already, which is pretty likely, my name is Ryan, I'm a 19 year old from the UK and I've undergone a physical and mental transformation over the past three years. And I've transformed myself from 51 kg in 2021 to now currently weighing 69 kg at the peak of my cut in 2024 and I'm on a mission to inspire and help skinny young men who have previously struggled with weight gain to sculpt their physiques and achieve their dream physiques through me making videos and obviously as you've just seen I have been there once myself so I really really want to help you so without further ado let's get into this video and I will explain the big mistake skinny young men make when bulking and if you can get past this identify it and work past it then you're going to get ahead of so, so, so many people. So, the big mistake everyone is asking and everyone is on their knees for right now. Well, I don't know if you're on your knees, but you know what I'm trying to say. Measuring progress solely off scale weight. Well, I've just got to clear something up because when I'll talk about how solely focusing on the scale weight is inaccurate and really bad, obviously I'll talk about how focusing on the scale weight is good and i feel like it doesn't really like it wouldn't make sense to me if i was watching a video personally so i just want to step in and intervene before i go and explain so what i mean by this whole video and the big mistake is focusing only on scale weight is bad okay focusing on scale weight along with the other ways to track progression combined is good right if you focus on the scale weight and the other stuff that I'll talk about later, that's really good. But if you don't focus on the other stuff and only focus on the scale weight in relation to your progression and base your progression off how much you've gained on the scale and number on the scale, that is what I mean by that's bad. So don't just focus on the scale weight and I get into I like and I get into what else you should focus on later. So sit back, relax, enjoy, learn, and I'll see you guys later and I'll let you get back to the video. But I just want to reiterate how skip how scale weight is actually important so obviously while you shouldn't rely on it it is very important and you can obviously see that you've made progression with it if your weight is going up then that means you're eating enough and that means you're training well therefore your weight is going to go up as a result you're going to you know obviously you'll gain a little bit of fat because you're bulking but you're also going to gain muscle because you're training well therefore it is a good sign of progress and as a skinny young man as i have showed you guys i have been there before and trust me, when a skinny young man sees that the weight is going up and the number on the scale is going up, then they're going to be happy. They're going to be over the moon and they're going to be so, so, so motivated to keep pushing. But as I have told you guys, I have previously been in this position. And I just want to tell you guys, if you are not seeing the weight going up every single week, don't be discouraged because that can be down to many, many factors. And I'm going to go into that a little bit later. And what you've got to look for is gradual increases. It's really, really slow increases because you want to be gaining quality weight, right? You want to be gaining muscle and less fat, which I'm also going to get into later. And these things don't happen overnight or within a week. It happens over time. Over the past three, and probably near now three and a half years that I've been in the gym, I have gained from 51 kg to my peak bulk last time which was 75 kg so i have you know a 24 kilo increase in three years and you can't expect that to happen for you in a short amount of time unless you're eating like ridiculous junk food and you're dirty bulking which i'm also going to get onto very soon so you've just got to look for them really really slow increases that constant improvement in you know slowly seeing your weight increase and you're going to gain quality muscle and as i said these things don't happen and, and, and as I've said, good things don't happen to you overnight, they happen over time. However, scale weight is not everything, as I have said. As a skinny young man, you've got to be using other methods in order to, you know, track your progress and 
measure your progress and I'm going to get into those um, at the last stage of the vid as I said and you've got to think of just a scale weight as one piece of the puzzle if you're if you're solely basing your progression off one piece of the puzzle then you're never going to see what the puzzle actually looks like and you're never and you're never going to see the whole picture so you've got to think about the scale weight as you know one piece of the puzzle and if you take into consideration all the other methods of how you track your progress and you uh, and you put them into action then you're going to see the whole picture and you're going to get a better perspective and a better uh, vision which I'll get into later of you know how you've made progression so it's so important that you take into other uh, take into consideration other methods of how to track your progression and not just solely the weight so now I'm going to get into why this is a huge mistake and why you should just avoid this and this is because as a skinny young man obviously as i've said you're so eager to see that weight go up every time you see that weight go up you're going to be so happy and you're going to be so motivated however relying on solely scale weight as i have said is very very misleading and this is because that weight could it, it might not be muscle it could be fat it could be water retention it could be other things so you're technically making in your you're tracking your progression inaccurately if you're always looking at the scale weight so for this reason don't be obsessing over your weight because it's stupid and it can be misleading as i've just said because that weight could not be necessarily be muscle there's so many other things it could be such as the fat and the water retention and water retention is basically because on the bulk you're eating more carbohydrates and your glycogen stores are higher then you're going to retain more water simple as that okay so to sum up the problem with this mistake and why it's bad is because as i said it's misleading because you're not seeing the full picture and it's also inaccurate because of things such as the weight may not be muscle you think you could be gaining you think you may have gained 20 kilos of muscle during the bulk but the likelihood of a lot of that being fat and um you know if you're looking at your weight in the short time if you're weighing yourself daily then the chances of water fluctuate and, and the chance of water retention and other things having a contribution towards changing your weight every day is a lot higher. So therefore, it's pretty inaccurate how you're tracking your progress. So that is the main problem with being obsessed over scale weight, do, looking at it every day and solely basing your progress off just scale weight. Okay, so now I want to go over with you guys understanding the long term perspective and I want you guys to be able to identify and you know comprehend this perspective. So as we know, the gym and bodybuilding, it's a delayed gratification game. We can't be putting muscle on with a click of a finger. It doesn't happen like that. You've got to understand that building muscle is a slow process and over the long term, it is a long term process and it is a long term commitment, okay? So you can't be focusing on the short term progress and the short term ways of how to measure progression all the time, which is obviously the scale weight, which I'm referring to. The scale weight equals measuring short-term progress and this is because as i said those fluctuations in weight and you know how different factors contribute to fluctuations so for example fluctuations are basically because your body is you know because you consume different things every day and you probably consume different amounts of things every day such as different amounts of water different amounts of food you know including different amount of carbs and fats and proteins and all that stuff because you probably con uh because you probably um consume different amounts of all that stuff a day your weight is going to fluctuate for example if you drink like a pint of water just before you go to bed then you're going to wake up you're going to wake up heavier like it's guaranteed because you're going to your body's going to have water retention or it's like if you eat a pizza just before bed you're going to wake up heavier because that you know you're going to have that retention of that food in your body so you've got to understand that these fluctuations and measuring your weight all the time and being obsessed over the scale number is only the short term right you're not looking at the long-term perspective such as the other methods which i'm going to get into so it is so important that you understand the long-term perspective and how just focusing on scale weight kind of blocks out and blocks out you understanding and embracing that long-term perspective and it only sort of shifts your focus towards a short-term perspective which is what you should not be doing but yes as i said you should obviously be using scale weight to track progression and i would suggest in order for you to not fully get obsessed over it and to not you know inaccurately track your scale weight is you should take the average of everyday 
in you know within a week so obviously every day you should measure it right but don't take it into consideration as oh i've gained two kilos because you could have eaten a three thousand calorie domino pizza like right before you went to bed and that's why you gained two kilos right you've got to measure it out throughout the whole week so every day take a picture or take a note of your scale weight and then work out the average for the week and then compare that to the last week and i would say that is a very very fair way of interpreting scale weight not um, not necessarily just for the short term. It will contribute towards a more accurate um, picture of your long term progression. Moving on to avoiding excessive fat gain. And this is so important because obviously when you're skinny and bulking, as I said, you want to see that weight going up. You want to see that scale weight going up. But as I've said, gaining muscle is a slow process and it takes years to do. And it's all about a delayed gratification game. These things don't come to you straight away and these things don't come to you in the click of a finger, as I said. They happen over time, not overnight. And because skinny young men, when they're bulking, they want to see the weight going up because that's one of the main things that, you know, tracks progression, right? Then they want to see the weight going up. But however, that's also very misleading because as I said, if their sole focus is trying to get the scale weight up and trying to get that number on the scale up as much as possible then the likelihood of them putting on excessive amounts of fat during their bulk is very high and obviously they may still put on muscle because they're eating enough to be in the surplus therefore you know they're providing their body you know they're feeding their body not okay right so they're going to have energy to train and they're going to have calories to you know burn and calories to use and take advantage of right so they'll still put on muscle but what i'm trying to say is that they're going to put on just as much if not more fat because if they're trying to gain weight as quickly as possible, and if their sole goal is to gain weight, then they're going to do everything to gain weight. Because it means they're, 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 it's, it's probably going to lead to dirty bulking, right? Because when someone's sole goal and you know sole aim is to gain as much weight as possible, they want to eat pizzas and burgers and all this high, shitty, calorific food that contain obviously it still contains protein but it's going to contain shitty protein and probably three times the amount of fat compared to the protein right it's probably going to have a one to three ratio of protein and fat so the likelihood of them you know eating this sort of food because they want to gain as much weight as possible is a lot higher therefore they're going to gain a lot of fat which is really really bad because in the long term when they have to cut down and lose that fat it's going to be a longer and more you know it's going to be a longer and harder process for you which can mentally affect you and also physically affect you and because you're on less calories you may have to be on even less calories because you've got more fat to lose over a longer period of time imagine that however if you actually understood that gaining weight and gaining muscle is over a, a it's, it's a slow process it's a delayed gratification game and it takes a long period of time to be able to put on quality muscle and quality weight then you would have understood so you would have been eating healthy getting your protein and getting in your surplus from whole foods therefore by the time you'd have to cut down you would be in less of a deficit and it would take less time to cut and therefore because you're in less of a deficit to lose less fat then you're going to have more calories to use in the gym and you're going to be able to train harder and probably make more progression than the person that's got to be on uh, even more of an extreme deficit over a longer period of time because they solely focus on the scale weight which trying to trick their brains into thinking that they've got to eat as much as possible therefore they were eating shitty foods therefore they put on more fat therefore as a result they had to be in a more extreme deficit over a longer period of time and if you don't identify that this is a long-term process combining that with solely focusing on scale weight is a rep is a recipe for disaster because the likelihood of skinny young men trying to dirty bot because of that is very very high now you guys understand that so i'm just going to briefly go through you know the stages of the video before i go into the other methods you should use in order to track your progress so first of all i explain why obviously scale weight is good so you've got to remind yourself that you know tracking scale weight is good and why it's beneficial but you've got to remember it's not everything and it's not the you know you know it's only one puzzle of the full puzzle and it's only a quarter of the full picture so you've got to look at the full picture and use and utilize all of these methods that I'm going to go through in a minute. And then I'll explain why this is actually a new mistake. So the weight you may be gaining is not necessarily muscle, it could be fat and water retention and all of that other stuff, right? And then I'll make you guys understand and identify the long-term perspective. So how these things happen over time and not overnight and how 
gaining quality muscle and gaining weight and gaining quality weight is a slow process so you can't be focusing and obsessing over this every single day and i went over a good way to track weight so obviously you weigh yourself every day and that's not obsessing over it because you don't base your progression off that you just note it down and then at the end of every week or at the start of every monday you you know you work out the average for the week and you compare it to last week and that is a perfect way of measuring your progress oh and one more thing as well to make sure you're not gaining as much fat going back to the avoiding excessive fat gain right on your bulk every week you want to be looking at gaining around 0.5 to one pound a week to ensure that you're gaining weight at a perfectly smooth rate without putting on too much fat and the likelihood of that being quality weight is going to be a lot higher so have that in your mind trying to gain around 0.5 to one pound a week and as i said you 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 may be thinking oh my fucking god that's like nothing right yeah i know but it's a long time process so you've got to be willing to commit right so and, and you'll thank yourself in the future so now i've recapped and now you hopefully understand everything about why this is a huge mistake now let's combat that mistake and let's get over this mistake <laughs> sorry right so other ways you should keep an eye on your progression so obviously you've got your scale weight, but that's just one factor. Okay, so the second way I would advise you guys to keep an eye on your progress is through your strength gains. But you've got to, you know, you've got to consider that strength doesn't necessarily correlate to muscle. And this is also another huge mistake that people make. I won't make it like a whole thing in the video, but I'll just briefly explain it. People think that strength correlates to muscle. And this is really, really bad, okay? Because for example, so if I was lifting 40 kilo dumbbells a couple of months ago, right, but my form was perfect, my form was down to a T, I had the three second negative on the way down, I paused it at the bottom and I went back up and I was getting, you know, I was getting six to seven reps. And then a couple of months later, say so, I went to 45 kilo dumbbells. I got five reps and my form was absolutely awful. I had a one second eccentric bouncing at the bottom, therefore risking my chest with injury. No pauses, no control anywhere, but I've got stronger, therefore that means I'm growing more muscle. Just think about that. My form was better with 40 kilo dumbbells and my form with 45 kilo dumbbells was shit. Therefore, that means that you're being more effective with the 40 kilo dumbbells. Therefore, you're probably stimulating more muscular hypertrophy with the 40 kilo dumbbells in, in comparison to the 45 kilo dumbbells. Because if my form was awful with high weight, that means that I'm not stimulating and isolating my muscle properly and giving it the time and attention it needs to grow. Because if I'm not doing that, and if I'm trying to just focus on, you know, if, if your sole focus is on the weight and increasing the weight, then you're going to completely forget and you're going to shift your focus away from, you know, isolating a muscle and being as effective as you can. Therefore, you're going to hinder your progression. So what you're actually better off doing is going back down to the 40s and properly controlling the weight or even going to 42 and a half. So obviously measuring your gains and your progression with strength is key, especially at the start, because, you know, obviously, as I said, exponential growth at the start. But you've got to consider strength isn't everything and strength doesn't necessarily correlate to muscle unless you utilize the weight when you're increasing it. OK, so obviously, obviously, as I said, going back to that example, if you're using 40 kilo dumbbells and you get up to 10 reps, really nice, three second eccentric, one second pause, obviously at the top, squeezing it at the top, putting your muscle under maximum isolation, all that stuff, good. You get comfortable with that weight, therefore you increase it to 42 and a half kilo dumbbells. You've got to make sure that you keep the exact same form, the exact same tempo in the exercise. Because that means you're gonna perfectly progressively overload your muscle and you're gonna stimulate it with, um, you know, you, obviously you're gonna stimulate it with, a, with bigger weights. Therefore, it's going to be large, larger repairs needed in the muscle. Therefore, there's going to be more growth. So you've got to make sure that you're keeping the same form and the same tempo. And if you're not, go back down to the weight before and then work on that. And then once you're capable of doing that, then go back up. And I made a full video on this. It's called the three step framework that I follow in order to make sure that I progressively overload perfectly. And therefore, you can measure your strength gains as accurately as possible. So after this video, I would highly, highly, highly suggest that you go and watch it. I'll leave it in the cards here somewhere and it'll, you know, it will sort you out. And now onto the final way to measure your progress. So visual progress in terms of photos and measurements. So taking measurements of your muscles every, you know, six months, for example. So obviously, you know, your tensile bicep, 
you you know you get the measurement in there and then six months later you measure it again and you'll probably see some progression and that's how you want to be tracking progress and measurements and photos these the, all of this stuff this visualization stuff is so important because you're 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 seeing progression that the weight and that other stuff and the strength doesn't show you you're going to see your chest getting bigger and you're going to see your physique developing however you're not going to see that through seeing your weight increase by six kilos on a bulk right you're not going to see the you're not going to see the improvements until you look back at your progression photos and you're like holy shit and i feel like it's really important because it shows you how far you've come and as i said the scale doesn't necessarily show you this side of the progression and this is the this is the other bits of the jigsaw that is so so key in order to accurately tracking and accurately measuring your progress so making sure you take photos and videos of you posing and doing the same stuff in the same place in the same lighting is so 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 important now i just want to remind you guys of this jigsaw analogy so with the other methods of progression and the other ways of how to track progression if you only take photos and you don't look at the scale weight and you don't take into consideration your strength when you're utilizing the weight properly and doing the perfect form you don't take in you take you don't take those into consideration and you're still only using one piece of the jigsaw and if you only consider the strength in terms of your progression to track your progression and you don't take progress photos and you don't step on a scale and work out your averages every week, then you're only using one piece of the jigsaw. So it is so important that you use all of these pieces in the jigsaw to therefore look at the full picture and, you know, analyse the full picture. And you're going to get the perfect uh, representation of your progress on whether you're actually making proper progress or not. Just to remind you guys, still track your scale weight, get your averages for the week because it's a really good way to measure your progression, but don't just do that and use the other pieces of the jigsaw and you're going to get the most accurate representation of your progression. That is the end of the video. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video and truly learned something about why solely focusing on scale weight and the number of the weight going up is so, so, so inaccurate and misleading in order for in, or in relation to tracking your progression and if you have learned something in this video i would really really appreciate it if you drop a like a comment and a subscription for more content like this to try hopefully help you in your journey to transforming yourself from a skinny young man to you know having a sculpted physique right and i'm working on something absolutely huge at the moment so i wouldn't want to miss it so drop a sub and stay tuned and i will see you guys in the next one Wapa.